Hello everybody and welcome to our first uh, director's commentary. Uh, my name is James Dunbar and I'm the guy who films these um, and edits them and writes them and everything like that so I guess I'm the director um, and so I thought I'd try something a bit different uh, and show you sort of uh, a sort of commentary video where I talk about like um, my motivations for filming things and like how things were filmed um, and so yeah hopefully this will be interesting uh, thanks very much for watching um, and yeah uh, so what you're seeing on the screen just now is some footage of bee flies that I shot uh, I didn't have anything else to do with it so I thought I'd put it in here and that one that right there that one is about to lay an egg and so they uh, literally just sort of flick their eggs like this here we go and that's how they lay them they flick them into solitary bee nests they're kleptoparasites so here we go okay so initially this sort of um, segue is a bit different from all the others that I've done um, I wanted to have something that wasn't just like here's an animal or, or here's a location and here's a time of year and here's an animal that lives there um, I wanted to take sort of uh, quite a sort of esoteric concept like flight and sort of sort of connect that across the animal kingdom I actually kind of got the idea from a Lindsay Ellis video <laughs> that she made about uh, the movie or the musical Cats, the movie of the musical Cats and she starts out talking about Guy Fieri and then segues on the cats from that which I thought was pretty interesting so I'll do something similar and start talking about flight in birds and then go on to flight in insects also gave me something to do with that bird footage um, which I shot like three years ago uh, when I first got my GH5 so finally I had something to do with that which is nice so yeah, um, we got on to hoverflies. Um, now this shot here was basically, like it was a very lucky shot, um, and it's what sort of got me into sort of paying a bit more attention to them and what they were doing. Now to film hoverflies, because they're so quick, um, it's really impossible to sort of move a camera and a tripod around really fast to follow them. So you just have to sit and wait um, and let them come to you and just hope that they get close enough and hope that they're uh, not getting blown around by the wind um, and that you can sort of get good shots. Um, all of these shots here from when they're sort of uh, looking to lay their eggs, like <laughs> there was a slight breeze that day and just every now and then it would just ease up and what you're seeing is like the 5% of footage that I managed to film when they weren't just getting blown all over the place um, but yeah you just got to sort of find where they want to be and just sit and wait for them and so there's quite a lot of patience and, and uh, especially with something like egg laying uh, there's quite a lot of luck involved um, they're very particular about where they lay their eggs um, and filming that in the wild is very tricky all of this was shot in the wild. Um, I was outside, uh, which I really like because I like filming in the wild. Um, and so I really enjoyed making this. Um, uh, here we go, the egg laying shot. Uh, now that, like that was largely luck. I mean, she just as easily could have done that on the other side of the, of the plant. But yeah, I got to film the hoverflies outside, which was nice because so much of what I do now is in the studio, um, and you know I don't know I don't I don't like it as much. I do prefer to film in the wild. I really liked that cut, that track out from the flowers that was originally gonna be a time lapse. Richard Mann told me to change that. This is all in the studio because uh, there's no wind, and so we get some nice foreshadowing here, I think, with the. Uh, with the aphids and the hoverfly larva and what I really sort of loved about these insects was the hoverfly larva are just so unassuming you just don't ever think that they're going to be these killing machines and they just mince through aphids you see they hold it away from the stalk so that its legs can't get any purchase and then once they've done that it's just game over 
Now for the sort of second half of the sequence with the larva, um, in the edit I wanted to sort of make it have a kind of a different feel and so what I did was the clips are much longer and there's much fewer cuts and this is to sort of reflect uh, the fact that the larva are sort of very slow um, and languid and the hoverflies themselves are much more sort of fast and frantic. Um, Richard uh, Collins, the composer, didn't actually need to be told to change the music up, he just did it um, because he's, he's very good. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to give this sort of half a sort of a kind of a different feel is a different part of the animal's life cycle. But yeah, we're coming to the end here. Um, I think you'll all agree that uh, Dave has a much better voice for the voiceovers than I do, so that's why I don't do it. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this, do please uh, share it uh, with your friends. And yeah, hopefully see you on the next one.